Hello there and welcome. I'm Juliana Michaels and in this video I'm starting off my Love is in the Air series. Over the next few weeks, look for a series of videos with love as the theme. I'm not huge into celebrating Valentine's Day, but it's a great reminder that we can let our loved ones know how much they mean to us any day of the year. I'm creating this series to give you some inspiration for making cards that will show your loved ones how much they mean to you. But of course, these techniques can be used for any card and for any occasion. If you're interested in the supplies I've used to create this card, you can find links to them in the description box below. When you shop through those links, you support me and I really appreciate that. And if you would like to see both of these cards in more detail, head over to my blog using the link below to check them out. Now let's get on with the making. In this video, I'm going to be working with a mix of dies, uh, embossing folders, stamps, and stencils. So I just wanted to go over uh, which ones I'll be working with. Uh, first up is the new Vault Lovebirds die set by Tim Holtz for Sizzix. The True Love Color Eyes by Tim Holtz. Woodland Borders by Olivia Rose for Sizzix. And I'm gonna be using this embossing folder, which is called Type, Typewriter by Tim Holtz, and it's a 3D embossing folder. I'm gonna be using this brush mark stencil, which is part of the Mini Set 55 by Tim Holtz. And for the sentiment, I'm gonna be using this Word Fetty Best Day Ever stamp set by scrapbook.com. And then on the background, I'm gonna be using a mix of stamps. Um, I'm gonna be using the Professor, Stamp set, Faded Type, and Tiny Prints, all by Tim Holtz with Stampers Anonymous. And um, as with any of these um, products, feel free to you know, use anything similar that you might already have in your stash. So off camera, I went ahead and did some die cutting. And to do the die cutting, I used the Tim Holtz craft stock. So this is the black craft stock. And then these are some of the papers from the various other paper packs that um, I used. And with this um, paper, it's a craft paper that has a color printed on one side of it. So what I love about this is when you um, sand it or emboss it with a embossing folder, it will kind of help like kind of reveal that craft color. Um, and I just love the vintage effect that that achieves. And the first thing though we're going to do is to work on the background because it needs some time to dry. And the paper I'm gonna be working with is the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Paper. And um, I'm gonna be working on the smooth side. And the first thing I'm gonna be doing is some stamping. And I'll be using archival ink because I want some sort of a permanent ink so that the next layers of things can be, because I'm also gonna be working with some spray stain and uh, distress inks. And I just wanna make sure that the stamped images don't bleed. Um, and that's where the permanent ink will come into play. And so now to do the stamping, I'm gonna be working with a stamping block, but you could also do this in a stamp stamping platform if you wanted. Um, and then I'm just gonna ink this up here. And I'm kind of going for this uh, type of stamping because I'm not super concerned about it being a perfect stamped image because the background I'm kind of going for is a bit of a distressed effect. There's that. And then now I'm gonna take this um, tiny prints image. And I took a paper towel, and what I'm gonna do is kind of use this to mask off where I've already stamped and kind of get kind of a cool edge. But I don't wanna cover up this entire uh, image here. A little Ziva hair there. And so I'm just gonna apply ink to this one side here of the stamp. And then just lay that down. It's 
So that paper towel is kind of serving as a little bit of a mask. And there you go. And so then I'm just going to flip that around and do the same thing over here. kind of add a little bit more interest. I'm going to take this uh, script stamp and just add a little bit more layering here and there with that. And you could totally skip this part if you want to. Just wanted to add a little more interest here and there. More there. There we go. Okay. Next up, we're gonna add some spray ink to the background. And for this, I'm gonna be working in a splat box. And I'm gonna use the Tattered Rose Distress Oxide Spray to, to spray this with. And um, just so you're aware, and you can even see here in the box, looks like I've sprayed something with this same color, and I did. I actually made this card once already, just to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. And so now I'm kind of recreating it again for, for this video. And in the original one, I actually used regular uh, Distress Spray Stain on the background, and this time I thought I would try the Oxide Spray just to go for a little bit of a different look and see, see how I liked it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water, get that activated. And then I'm gonna use my heat tool to dry the paper and something just recently I've tried this before like you notice how the paper kind of rolls up and if you get a lot of ink on there it kind of um, you know it curls and then the ink rolls off to the side if you put a pair of scissors long scissors in the center and kind of hold it down then you can keep that ink from running off the paper this one is not such a big deal because I don't have that much ink on here but uh, just something you could try in the future when you're creating backgrounds with your sprays. Okay. Next up, I'm going to just ink the edges a little bit with some Walnut Stain Distress Ink. And I'm just going to add just a little bit here to the edges just to darken things up a little bit. I'll go ahead and dry this just because of the next step I don't want anything wet because we are going to be working with some distress embossing glaze and if there's anything wet the powder will stick to that area and I only want it to stick where I want it to stick so now we're going to take that little brush stroke uh, stencil and some translucent crackle paste and a palette knife and I'm going to apply the paste and as you can see this jar is almost empty <laughs> I think I might have enough to get this one this project done here and when you apply this I especially if you live in a more humid area, which it tends to be a little bit more that way here where I am, um, you want to just kind of apply like a thin layer. Not, don't want to get it too thick. And just kind of gently wipe it over the openings. 
And as you can see, I'm not going the whole stencil. I'm actually just adding some along this kind of upper corner here. And then I can just kind of gently peel that up. And then I'm going to repeat that process down in this lower corner. Just want to make sure I got enough on here. And kind of use your fingers to help hold the stencil up so it doesn't get down into the area where you already worked. And you just kind of have to use your fingers here a little bit to kind of help hold things down so that the paste doesn't get underneath the stencil. And that's also where going, you know, like just with a smaller amount on your spatula, you can always add more. Get too much on here, then it tends to want to get Gonna get underneath the stencil easier. Okay. So from this, I'm gonna put the stencil in some water or go clean it off either way, um, just so that the paste doesn't dry on there. And then of course, clean off my spatula and I'm just going to put this is just some press and seal that I've uh, put in here to kind of help keep it from drying out and so far that seems to be working out well and now while that paste is still wet we're going to add some of that embossing glaze and this is just a piece of printer paper that kind of uses a funnel and so I'm gonna pour the, I'm using, tat, and this is Tattered Rose Embossing Glaze. I'm just gonna pour the powder over those areas where we applied the paste. Move it around here till get all of it covered up. And yeah, okay, yeah, that looks good. So we're gonna set this to the side and let that crackle paste dry. You don't want to try to speed up the drying process with a heat tool because you will not get that crackle effect if you do that. So you just wanna you know set it to the side and let it dry. And once it's dry, we can uh, use the heat embossing gun on it. And then when I'm done with the powder, I can just use this paper to dump the excess back into the jar. So now while the paste is drying, I'm gonna work on uh, distressing the die cuts and assembling those pieces. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the large heart that I die cut and I'm going to emboss it with that typewriter embossing folder. And to do that, to try to minimize cracking and to get a really good impression, I'm gonna spritz this with some water using my Distress Sprayer and I'll place it inside the embossing folder and run it through my embossing machine. Here's what the uh, die cut looks like after I've embossed it. And as you can see, that craft uh, core kind of comes through a little bit um, when you rub it, run it through the um, embossing folder. And now what I'm going to do just to help kind of bring out some of that, I'm going to sand over it with a sanding disc, which is also just a fine grit sandpaper. And I've got a little piece of scrap packaging here. I'm just going to just lightly rub over this kind of along the edges of the heart as well, some of the areas here in the, I'm, gonna, I'm not trying to remove all the color, but just enough to add a little interest. And once you're done with that, you can just you know take a paper towel and wipe off that excess powder because some of it does come off 
the dust. And then I'm going to sand these other die cuts as well um, using that same kind of sandpaper thing. And so when you're working with a die that's really very delicate like this one, you want to just make sure that you're not, you don't need to, you're not rubbing really hard, just very gently. And, you know, you really use your fingers to help hold the die and then sand away from where you're holding the die so that you don't accidentally tear the die cut. And another trick when you're sanding is you can leave the die cut in the paper you cut it out from and sand over it that way. And that's another way to kind of help protect the die from tearing. But you do kind of have to get the sandpaper kind of at a different angle so you're going to have to kind of get onto the edge of the paper with your sanding so that you can get down in there and get to the get to the paper a little easier now that i have all of the pieces cut out and sanded i'm going to adhere them with so a liquid adhesive with just a fine tip precision applicator. And this is uh, from scrapbook.com. It's their artiste glue. I also um, cut a piece of the same purple paper into a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of paper to be the background or the base for my card front. And this, I just sanded the edges of that as well. We're going to glue on the heart. This again is where that precision tip really comes in super handy. You don't need a lot of glue to get it to stick, but you need some. So it just helps you keep from getting it too goopy and squishing out when you lay it down on here. Okay, now to add a little more interest to all of these, I'm going to add a little bit of Sizzix Luster Wax in rose gold. And I recommend wearing a glove when you're doing this. It's just a little bit easier cleanup. Because <laughs> um, you don't have to worry about washing your hands. And I just have a little bit on my finger from in here. And then I kind of like to rub it around in the lid to kind of get it more, a little more even. And I'm just gonna very, very lightly. I'm not trying to cover up everything that I sanded off earlier. Just wanna add a little bit of shimmer here and there. Here we go. And then just kind of set that to the side. And then once that dries, that's not going anywhere. Get a little bit onto these flowers. A little bit here on the edge of the birds. Maybe I actually didn't like get a little bit more on there than you were planning like I did there. Just go with it. It's really not going to be the end of the world, and you can always cut another one if you don't like how it looks. Now for the sentiment, I just uh, cut a small scrap of that pink paper, and like I mentioned earlier, I'm using the Word Fetty Best Ever, Best Day Ever stamp set, and it's just got so many cute little sentiments, and I love the typewriter font. Just kind of, just as a nice vintage feel. And then the ink I'm going to use for this is the Versafine. It's a pigment ink. And it just doesn't stain the clear stamps quite so bad. So 
So that's why I am use it with clear stamps instead of the archival ink, but you could certainly use archival ink to do this stamping. And then because this is a pigment ink, it's a slower drying ink, so you're gonna need to um, give that you know a little bit of time to dry, or you can um, speed up the drying process with your heat tool if you like. It's kind of coming back to the background that we worked on earlier. It's still not quite dry, so I'm gonna uh, set this to the side and let it dry and work on something else. Uh, the basically the way you kind of tell is if it's dry is if you can. Like for me, I can feel the backside of this paper feels kind of cold and damp. So that lets me know the paste is still not dry. And I'm not start, I'm just, just starting to see a little bit of the crackle coming in. So you, again, you just kind of want to be patient and let that paste do its thing. Okay, so I'm back and this is about as dry as it's gonna get. And I don't think you'll be able to see it on camera, but the, Crackle paste has has dried and has done its thing. So now I'm gonna turn on my heat tool and heat emboss the glaze. And here's a look at the finished embossing. Um, I'm gonna add a little more interest with um, some ink blending and just darken it up just a teeny little bit more. Do that, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of um, gathered twigs. Just a little bit more. A little brown. And if you have any of the uh, paste that's kind of like seeped over the edge of the card front, you can just use your scissors and just kind of trim that off if you want. So now the background is finished and the card can now be assembled. Here's a look at the completed card. And I uh, did here the die cuts. I just used some double-sided foam tape to pop them up and give them a little bit of dimension. Oh, I also wanted to give you a, a look at the original card I created. And you can see there's really not a lot of difference um, other than this ink back, this background on the one on the right here is a little bit lighter in color. And that is because when I did this first one, I added quite a bit more brown around the edges with that gathered twig where I didn't do quite as much of that on the, the second one. But this background was created with regular distress spray stain. And this background was created with the oxide spray stain. So it just kind of goes to show that you can, for this particular technique anyway, you can certainly use either one of those sprays and get a very, very similar effect um, when you're creating it. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this card came together. And until next time, stay crafty, my friend. Thanks so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much, and it would mean so much to me to have your support.